Well, today's video is sponsored by Black Gold Compost Company. We want to thank the good people over at Black Gold for their generous donation of all this black cow cow manure that we're using in our video today. Thank you for sponsoring our channel. Question for you. Can you grow garlic in Florida? We're going to find out. Be right back. <music> Well, welcome back. Yeah, earlier I promised you I'd give us a try on uh, growing some of this uh, garlic in Florida. And you know, we're living in zone 9A down here where we're, we're at. And when me and Nancy lived up in Virginia, we were in zone 8A and we could grow garlic. We could grow soft neck as well as hard neck. So we had a, a plenty of garlic growing going on up there. But when you get down to Florida, all my friends here in Florida, you know, it's, very hard to grow flor uh, Florida garlic when you have high temperatures and high humidity. So uh, I promised you on our elephant garlic video, we'd give it a try. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, my recommendation, based on what I know, is uh, if you live in zone nine, which is where I'm at in Florida, I, I would not even attempt to grow hard neck uh, garlic at all. It's not heat tolerant, it, it wouldn't be able to take it down here. So all my friends in southern, south of me down in zone 10, completely forget garlic completely, soft neck and hard neck. But if you live in zone nine, you may have a slight chance with the soft neck because soft neck's a little bit more heat tolerant. I'm not guaranteeing it, but at least we'll try, okay? So anyway, uh, Let's give it a try. I got us some soft neck garlic today. And got a pretty good load of it. These are beautiful. If we can just make something out of them. And I wanted to show you how I'm gonna do this. I got myself about a gallon of water in this bucket. You see the bucket okay? Got about a gallon of water. And I'm using this liquid seaweed. I'm gonna use about two tablespoons of liquid, liquid seaweed and one gallon of water with one tablespoon of uh, baking soda mixed in here. So let's get this in first. Okay, there's the baking soda. Two tablespoons of the uh, liquid seaweed. Okay, got that stirred up. Next step, well, I guess you're probably wondering why I even did that. This, um, this seaweed, liquid seaweed is gonna give these uh, cloves a little boost of, um, of uh, fertilizing to get them stimulated and get them going. And the baking soda is gonna help me uh, with the um, fungus that's in the garden beds. Cause remember when we're growing these throughout the uh, winter, what happens is, is it's wet and cold. And we know what that, com that combination equates to is fungus problems and mildew problems and root rot problems. So if we have um, a soak, we do about a 12, 16 hour soak in this solution here, that will reduce some of that. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I take these big old beautiful bulbs and I open them up and I break them loose until I get out the very best uh, cloves out of here because you know you're going to get some scrawny ones. So you want to get the biggest ones you can get off of this bulb. Okay, there's my first one. And what I want to do is separate out the big ones. That's for my planting. And these little little scrawny ones here, we'll just save those for the spring so we can do some um, spring garlic. 
So let me go ahead and get these all broke out and I'll be right back and we'll take it to the next step. Hey, okay, here we go. Got us a nice pile of the uh, nice big cloves. And um, can you see that okay, Nancy? Yeah. That's the seaweed and the baking soda. And that's my solution. I'm gonna, all I do is just simply put these big cloves in here and let them soak overnight. So uh, they give them about, oh, about 12, 15 hours or so worth of soak. And uh, we'll be back in the morning. We'll come out here after these have been soaking all night and uh, we'll get over there and get them put into the earth bed. So at least now, um, by you, you doing this soak, it'll give them a little bit of a fighting chance here in Florida. A lot of people up north of us from here, some people say they don't even bother doing that. They just stick it right in the ground. Some people say, yeah, I wouldn't never dream of um, trying to grow garlic without doing a 12 hour soak, pre-soak like that. But it's up to individual. I've learned one thing in gardening over the last 50 plus years is everybody's got an opinion. So whatever works for you, that's the one you wanna use. So anyway, we'll be back in the morning and we'll put this in the ground together and we'll hope for the best, keep our fingers crossed and we'll watch the progression of this all the way out until harvest. This is October, so if it goes according to plan, we should be able to harvest these uh, soft neck garlics in July next year. So I'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning. Our garlic cloves have been soaking overnight. Brand new day. They've been in here about 16 hours. So what I want to do is I want to get these guys out of the bucket. There we go. Oh, man, they smell good. There we are, beautiful garlics. Been soaked and they're ready to go get in the ground. The first thing I got to do over there at the um, earth bed where I'm gonna be planting them is I'm gonna have to amend the soil heavily because you know, we got Florida sandy soil. So it's tough to grow stuff down here in Florida with sandy soil. So I'm gonna amend it with uh, a heavy load of uh, black cow cow manure. Animal compost is excellent for growing any kind of garlic. So if you want to use an animal compost in your garden for your um, garlic, please do so. <laughs> so after I get the animal compost over there, I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna cultivate the ground, fluff it up a little bit. I'm going to um, put down a layer of bone meal so I can get a good, good shot of phosphorus to this root system. And also um, blood meal to uh, give a good shot of nitrogen so we can get you know some good foliage on these beautiful garlics. Then after I get all that incorporated into the ground, into the earth bed, we'll till all that together. All oh, that's all blended, nice and pretty. Once we have that all graded out, then I'm gonna I'm gonna tap it down with my uh, my seed planting template that I usually use for onions, but it's on five inch centers, so it'll work perfect for my garlic. So they're five inch five inch centers, three rows of them. Then me and Nancy are gonna take these little sticks that we made, it's just a little piece of bamboo, and I put a mark on here at four inches. So we go up to the little dimple that the, that the uh, template puts in the earth bed, and we shove this stick down in here, and we waller out that hole just a little bit up to that mark. Then we take our garlic with the pointy end up, the root end down, and we drop it right down in that hole we push it down in the hole and we'll cover them over and they'll be set. So that's the process on how we're gonna be planting these things. They're all in full sun. Um, that's what you wanna look for in your garden, a, a, an area that's full sun. And um, these are gonna take until next July before we harvest. Now, um, being in Florida, I'm not even gonna mulch over them. A lot of folks up north, and when I lived up north in Virginia, I would mulch over my um, garlic because of the, 
uh, frost and snow that we would get up there, but I don't get that here in Florida. We don't have no snow and rarely do we even have a freeze. I mean, last year we had one freeze. <laughs> so, and it was only 32 degrees for about three hours. So some days, some, some years are very light. Now, some years are even worse. Some years it gets pretty cold. You know, you get down in the 20s. But um, we didn't last year, and this year I think it's going to be a little cooler than last year. We had an early, uh, uh, an early fall this year, so that's why I'm um, going to go ahead and plant these now a little earlier than I normally do. So I'm going to go ahead and get these in just to see if we can grow soft neck garlic in Florida. Our soft neck garlic's trying to make a, uh, a go of it down here in Florida. It's got a few of them coming up now, starting to make their grand appearance, breaking the soil and get some tops on them. We got um, cooler weather fixing to come on down, so this that should help them. Uh, they, they've done well considering what they've been through. They've been through a lot of high heat, and they've been through Tropical Storm Ada that came directly over our homestead and dumped quite a bit of rain and wind on us here. But uh, they seem to be doing okay. I'm not 100% on it, but we're getting there. So we'll keep our eye on this and we'll watch the progress of this soft neck garlic in the days ahead. Maybe we'll get some garlic out of Florida after all. Well, our attempt to grow soft neck garlic over the winter in Florida seems to be doing okay. We didn't have a real great success on the germination rate. I would have liked to have seen it a lot better. What I got is about probably 40%. So 40% of what we planted has emerged and is doing pretty good. Uh, the rest of it, eh, not so much. <laughs> so anyway, um, I would suggest on us Florida folks sticking to elephant garlic and trying to instead of trying to grow soft neck. Soft neck is probably your only ch chance of growing it. Hard neck, out of the question. It's just too hot down here. But um, soft neck, you might get a chance. And as you can see, we got a stand of garlic here that um, is not real impressive, but uh, you know at least it's some. So we're thankful and grateful for that. And um, if you look close, you could take a look at the structure of the uh, of the plant. It's doing well. We'll be uh, watching this in the days ahead. Probably the July time frame will be just about the right time for this garlic to come up out of the ground, and we'll get it over in the drying racks over there and um, clean it up and get it ready for the, for some spaghetti sauce. So anyway, um, we'll be back in the days ahead, and we'll watch the progress of this soft neck garlic all the way out to harvest. So. We'll see you soon. Well, our experiment with soft neck garlic trying to be grown in Florida is uh, proven to be not so much. I don't think that uh, I'll try to do soft neck garlic down here anymore. I definitely can do the hard neck, but I was hoping I might get a chance with the soft neck, but they just don't seem to really take to this Florida heat. The, um, the, the plants are doing okay, not nothing to be happy about, but they're doing okay. Nancy's come out here and she's harvested several of them here and there when she cooks because they're coming out right now, they sort of look like a leek, but they're very, very tasty. So she's happy with that. But um, I'm looking for, you know, to get some nice beautiful bulbs on them so I can dry them out and have the harvest, you know, um, last the rest of the year. So we may still, in fact, get some bulbs that are uh, doable that we can um, cure out and, uh, and uh, enjoy those the rest of the year. But until then, we're just kind of just hope for what it is. Um, I still got eh, probably a couple of more months I can let these go. And at that point, there'll be uh, time to come out and they'll have to come out at that point. That's as long as they can go. They've been in here for five months now. So we'll be back in uh, the days ahead and we'll take another look at where these things are and, and how the little experiment turned out. We'll hope for the best. Whatever we get, we'll be thankful for. We'll see you in a couple months.
Well, good morning, Homestead family. It's been seven months since we planted our soft neck garlic experiment here in Florida. We planted this at the end of October, and this is the end of May. So basically, it's gonna done, done all it's gonna do, and it's uh, really not very impressive. Um, not my best stand of garlic I've ever had. Up in Virginia, we could grow the soft neck as well as the hard neck with no problem at all, but down here, it just simply don't get cold enough for long enough in Florida for this stuff to really do what it needs to do. So um, we're gonna go ahead and harvest what we got out of it. As, as you can see, we've been kind of picking at it along the way, getting some of it out and mixing it in with some of the uh, cooking that Nancy does, but we haven't pulled out any, anything what I would call a beautiful piece of garlic. <laughs> but um, we learned on this one that uh, it's probably best that we just stick to the elephant garlic down here and, and don't mess with this uh, soft neck or hard neck, especially hard neck. I mean, soft neck can tolerate the heat a little bit better, but it didn't do very well here. So anyway, we're thankful for what we're getting. So let's go ahead and get this out and we'll go ahead and get it over into the drying rack and let it dry out for about a week. And then we'll at least have a little bit of something to put in the, uh, in the cooking with Miss Nancy. So let's get started. What I do is I take the, uh, I use a potato rake and I go down to the each of the garlics and I get up underneath it and I pull it up. I break it loose because you remember how deep we planted these things back last October. So they're down there pretty deep. So I don't want to just grab a hold of them and start trying to pull them out of the ground because <laughs> even though they're not very good garlic, I don't want to break them off in the ground. So we, we break them loose like this and then we just pull them up. And see, they come right on out real easy then. Okay, we get all the soft neck garlic in the drying rack and um, we're gonna give this about seven to 10 days to dry out and cure. Um, you can tell that the uh, tops are still green. The bottom leaves have died back. That's what I usually look for is the bottom three or four leaves when they die back like that right there, then it's pretty much ready. It's been seven months, that's another way you can gauge when it's time to harvest them because of the, you know, the calendar. But I usually look for these leaves that are dying back on the bottom three or four leaves, okay? Now the tops are still green. See, they're nice and soft. What I want these to do is, um, I did not wash them, did not get them wet. I just dug them up and I'm gonna come over here and leave them in the drying rack to dry out and in about seven or 10 days, these tops should be brittle or crispy or crunchy or whatever you want to call it. Nancy calls them crispy. But once these get uh, dried out, then we can come back and um, we'll cut the top off just above the cloves and we'll get rid of the roots. And by then they'll be nice and dried out and that garlic will be ready for long-term storage. None of the garlic in here is really impressive, nothing, um, <laughs> Nothing to get excited about. It's probably my last attempt of growing soft neck garlic in Florida. But at least we gave it a shot. We got something out of it, even though it's small. Nancy will be um, tickled pink. She'll use this in all kinds of cooking. It does have a good flavor. I mean, I'm smelling it as I'm working with this stuff, and it really does smell good. It's a good smelling garlic. It's just not size-wise anything that uh, you get excited about. But anyway, we'll be back shortly. It's only gonna be seven or 10 days. I put these garlics in here parallel 
on the rack. Then I put a next row right next to it and I lay the, the next row on top of the greens from the previous one and I just keep doing that until I get out here. Um, I have ventilation through the rack. I have ventilation under the rack. I'm gonna pull the tarp down so I have total shade in here and then it, and it also protects it from the heat and it's dry no rain no dew none of that's on here so that's what you want to look for is a, a place to cure your garlic it can be in your garage it can be in your barn it can be in you know under a shade tree as long as it's dry ventilated and um, dark out of the direct sun you don't want direct sun on it so that's the the three components that you need to cure your garlic. So we'll get these dried out and we'll be back shortly. Take it to the next step. See you in about a week. Yeah, feels like it's about ready. Tops have dried out mostly dried out pretty good. Would like for it to be a little bit drier than that, but it's good enough. So we can go ahead and trim this up. It is pretty small, so I don't think I need to leave it. Uh, the way I clean this garlic's really no different than the way I do my onions. The way I like to do this is I just get me a little scrub brush and I like to take the dirt off of here because I've never, um, wash these you know they've never been subjected to water so they've always been dry I don't want them to wet when you get them wet they end up getting a little bit of mildew on them and just gives you problems that you really don't want and that right there is about as good as I need to get it and at that point I take my shears and I just cut off the root and it makes a nice cut nothing to that Makes a nice little cut on it. Then I come up about an inch or so above the, um, the, the bulb, the cloves. I cut that off. And that right there is the finished product. <laughs> it's not the best looking garlic I've ever seen, that's for sure. But uh, Florida, Florida garlic is, uh, in our experiment, has proven to and not really be that great. And we even had um, a cold winter. We had several freezes this year, a very unusual for Florida. We even had a very cold springs. So with that in mind, I was thinking, wow, we might actually pull it off with the, uh, with the garlic. And I use the soft neck cause it's, you know, a little bit more tolerant to the heat, but it didn't get the job done. So pretty much our experiment proves that down here in Florida, I'm gonna to stick to uh, elephant garlic. But we are very thankful for everything that we get. This right here will still cook up real nice and uh, Nancy's cooking recipes and and we'll enjoy it. It's, it's not like it's a total bust. So I'm always thankful for whatever I get and I'm always thankful for everything I learned. So I learned here that um, I'm not gonna to have to <laughs> worry with uh, trying to grow garlic in Florida anymore. So anyway, let me get this cleaned up and we'll get it over to the pantry and uh, get it into long-term storage. Let's get started. go there's today's harvest and I'm going to put it right down here with this little garlic shell and it can continue to dry right there boy that smells good so there we go there's all Nancy's elephant garlic and there's her soft neck garlic and uh, a lot of you guys uh, are just joining the channel you know, you probably uh, never saw our our pantry, and uh, we put a video out about, I guess it's been about three or four years now, 
when we first moved here, I built this pantry. So if you want to build yourself some kind of a pantry or something, you might can get some good ideas from our uh, pantry video. And Nancy will give you a link to that video. Go check it out. Now, the way that I grew this, the procedure that I grew this soft neck garlic will work just fine for you if um, you live further north than Florida. We live in zone 9A down here. If you're in 8A or anywhere uh, north of 8, you shouldn't have any trouble at all growing garlic. In fact, if you're north of um, a Virginia area, you can even grow hard neck garlic with no problem. So, Soft neck is a little bit more heat tolerant, but uh, the procedure that I planted this um, should work for you. We actually have some other videos on how to grow garlic, you know, planting it in the fall, and there's a, a mini series that takes you through the whole step, it's very successful, and shows you how to do it. This was just an experimental, if we could get it to grow in Florida, and of course the experiment proved that you can't. <laughs> well, at least I can anyway. But anyway, we had a fun growing it. I hope that it uh, brought a smile to your face and some joy to heart and maybe you even learn something from it. But in the meantime, we're going to be thankful for this, this garlic that we got. It sure smells good. I'm sure Nancy will not let one piece of it go to waste. So until me and Nancy see you next time, we want to thank the Lord for this nice garlic. By his hands, we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Have a blessed day.